Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano, his wife Linda, and Oyster Bay Town Supervisor John Venditto were all indicted in connection with crimes associated with Harinder Singh. They used their positions of trust to engage in a scheme to receive bribes and kickbacks. So what happened was this story started with a whistleblower, a guy named Christopher Briggs. He grew up in Oyster Bay and he realized his dream of getting a job in Oyster Bay Town as a Bay Constable, but he became very upset with the corruption. Being an employee with the town, I've seen a lot of stuff from the inside of the town of Oyster Bay as well as the outside as a resident. There's a lot of things messed up in Oyster Bay and they need to be fixed. And he decided with the help of a few friends to pull together some records because he was so upset. He handed me over this uh, folder full of documents and two zip drives, two thumb drives. A pile of invoices and emails and travel itineraries and payroll sheets. Some of the stuff he got from dumpster diving. What are you supposed to do with this? And one of the concerns of the editors was, how do we know these are authentic? I can tell you most editors are very happy to have records nerds on the staff. I get really excited about uh, public finance things that most people sort of fall asleep at. I was a Bay Council Town of Voice Bay as well as a Bay Council Town of North Hempstead. It really geared up in 2012 when I came across some contracts and some bids and I started going to town board meetings and learning more and more what's going on and how the town of Oyster Bay and Lenny Genova and John Venditto are hiding things from the public. Well, we had heard the FBI, the feds were looking into the town, were looking into the Singh. So we had some inkling that something was going on. We just didn't have very much to go on. At one point, Harinder Singh operated 15 restaurants. He had a sprawling business empire. He operated the Water's Edge in Long Island City. He operated Woodlands in Oyster Bay Town. And he owned H.R. Singleton's in Bethpage. He was also a very close friend of Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano. The first story that we managed to sort out from these records was that Harendra Singh paid for lavish vacations in the Caribbean for Ed Mangano and his family, as well as assistant Oyster Bay Town attorney Fred May. We're talking $17,000 to Turks and Caicos and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Why do we care about the trips? Why would you care? Well, we cared because Singh had contracts with Nassau County and Oyster Bay. That would be a conflict of interest. A government official cannot take gifts from someone who's doing business with his municipality. They, they pleaded not guilty. They've all maintained their innocence. The government always says, buried in any press release, that an indictment is just an accusation. It doesn't prove anybody's guilty of anything. It's, it's quite true. Harendra Singh had these very nice concession contracts with the town of Oyster Bay. The town of Oyster Bay has parks. Some of these parks are on beaches, and some of these beaches have restaurants. And so Singh got the contract to run these restaurants. Makes sense. He's a professional restaurateur. When you get a town contract like that, you don't pay property taxes. And in Singh's case, he got, in effect, a 50-year lease with no competition. The way it should be awarded. It should always go to the you know, most cost-effective, you know, most confident um, people that can perform the particular service. And it's not being awarded based on extravagance or favoritism or you know, political connections. So I was finally able to put all this together. I looked into a little bit about the contracts, his uh, foundation, the Raj and Rajeshari Foundation, which is the family foundation that he had high-powered people like County Executive Ed Mangano and Town Supervisor John Vendetto. The Raj uh, Foundation is a foundation that simply saves lives. Ranger Singh had been involved with Bill de Blasio, who had just been elected mayor. So we had a lot of the stuff kind of mapped out, and we were just trying to look for a way to get the story into the paper. I wanted to beat the FBI. I wanted to get something in the paper before the FBI did something. We didn't know what was going to happen, but... Well, I brought everything to the DA's office. Kathleen Rice was district attorney. They downloaded my flash drive, they downloaded recordings I had from political figures about this. Her lead investigator really kind of like brushed the whole investigation off. I have handed over to Newsday before I went to the FBI. We had to be very careful, especially in the beginning. I mean, we're always careful, but we had to be very careful, especially in the beginning, to make sure that we, we knew what we were looking at. The government has subpoena power 
and can get everybody's records. We, obviously, in the newspaper business, don't have subpoena powers. So. On May 29, 2015, I had a lengthy interview with Town Attorney Lena Genova and Town Supervisor John Vendetto. I wanted to find out what was going on with the Singh concessions. Well, we'll have to look into it. We'll have to get back to you. We don't really know anything about this. I asked him about the lawsuits against the concessionaires. He's like, well, we don't really know anything about that. At one point, I asked him, uh, toward the end, of, at the end of the interview, how well do you know this guy? He's been the, he's been the concessionaire. He's been my, my licensee at the golf course and the two beaches in the parks for, what, 15 years? Of course I know who he is. Okay, yeah, no, but do you know him? I mean, do you... Uh... I, I, no, I don't. Listen, <laughs> I've met him. Um, I know who he is. I've, I don't know how else to answer that question. And he got a little defensive I there. He do kind I of comes you? off and he says, well, do, you know me? do I know you? Do I know, do I know, do you know me? I, mean, I don't even understand the import of the question. I don't even understand what's important about this question. Uh, uh, yeah, come on, that's enough. Well, I mean, he is, uh, he, he, I know he's given some money to your campaign. And, uh, uh, we went back and forth a little bit and okay. finally I said, okay, well, thank you very much. And then he says, he ends the conversation saying, you know, I have to rethink our relationship. If you don't understand it now, you will. But I, 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 you're pulling my tail because I know you do. You, uh, you've told me quite a bit about yourself in the last couple of minutes. I'm, I can't help but being disappointed. And he didn't speak to me again um, until April of this year. dove into this more complicated story, which was about loan guarantees that Oyster Bay Town gave to Harendra Singh. Indirect loan guarantees, really legally complicated. Okay, so how the loan guarantees work. There's a distinction between, uh, uh, stuff gets complicated. Um, <laughs> Singh's businesses, Harendra Singh's businesses needed capital, they needed money. You might need to get a co-signer, you might need to have someone vouch for you, you might need some collateral. Uh, a lender would say, well this guy, should I lend this guy, you know, uh, 20 million dollars? Well, it's, it's guaranteed that if he doesn't pay me or if he loses his contract, it's going to trigger this payment and that payment is going to flow from uh, the town to Singh and then to the lender. So he got the town of Oyster Bay to guarantee his loans. So that if he defaulted, guess who would be on the hook? Taxpayers! You and me! Under state law, it is illegal for a municipality to lend its credit to a private company. The official actions taken by Mr. Mangano and Mr. Venditto included, among other things, the town of Oyster Bay's guarantee of four loans totaling in excess of $20 million in Nassau County's award to the co-conspirator of lucrative contracts worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to provide food services to, the, to various Nassau County agencies. Nassau County gives out hundreds of contracts annually worth millions of dollars. Mr. Singh received a single contract during Hurricane Sandy because his restaurant had power and 600 emergency workers had to be fed. This was a 25-year-old friend. He was like a sister to my wife, a brother and a sister. It's ridiculous, but I can't say anymore. I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to continue to govern, I'm going to go to work, America's greatest country in the world, and you'll all have an opportunity to hear everything and decide for yourselves. God bless you. Ed Mangano had been a Nassau County legislator for years and years and then he decided to run for Nassau County Executive. And I think he was the Republican Party's second or third choice. He ran an energetic campaign. He was smart. He said, we're going to cut taxes. Tom Swasey raised taxes. And he eked out a victory over Tom Swasey. It was about, I think, 300 votes. It was a 300 vote margin. Mr. Mangano gets elected, and then the government alleges Mr. Singh hired Mr. Mangano's wife for no show job. 
I remember going, going out to Water's Edge one day, just basically on a fishing expedition to try to see what, um, if anyone remembered her, if she worked there, what she did for them. So I basically just walked up there and started asking people, um, do you know who Linda Mangano is? Up to the manager, basically everyone said no. No idea who she was and that if she worked for the restaurant, it might have been out of a different office or, or out of uh, Singh's main offices in, in uh, Bethpage. So we had a story about H. Singh right after Ed Mangano's election. He boasted to his employees, I've just hit Easy Street. When Ed Mangano took office, uh, you know, Mr. Singh was uh, someone he, he claimed as, as a close friend the whole way. Singh employees said that he comped top Nassau officials for dinners and parties. My immediate reaction was, gee, I don't even need an ethics statute to tell me that that's an obvious conflict. I had 10 people who identified Ed Mangano and were able to describe the kinds of meals he liked. He liked omelets at the Chow Down Diner. He liked pizza at Bessie Pizzeria. I would have to go to Singleton's often, Sing and Mangano. They, they weren't the nicest people to be around. I worked for Singh for almost two years. He was horrible to his employees. He was always behind on his pay. And one week, finally, I said, look, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to have my waiters and waitresses for weddings upstairs or for the restaurant. We need to take care of this. And he basically said to me, don't worry, it's not your problem anymore, you're fired. For me, one of the saddest things was I interviewed the former payroll manager. And she said, she used to cry every time she had to cut a payroll because she knew she couldn't pay everybody. So it was this nightmare for her. Every two weeks she had to do the payroll. But Linda Mangiano, she always got paid. Every two weeks, the payroll manager cut the check for Linda Mangiano, whom no one ever saw come to work. And it was put in an envelope called the LM check and hand delivered to H. Singh who told people not to talk about it. The hardest story was hearing about the people who suffered, who weren't, who weren't getting paid. And the suppliers, by the way, were not getting paid. While allegedly top politicians were whining and dining for free. Every town and municipality explains their budget. This town does not. Every town posts their agendas and the backup to those agendas, this town does not. Every town posts their minutes, this town does not. Oyster Bay is a town that has been governed with great secrecy for a very long time. They have run the town in such a way that uh, up until recently it was really impossible for, the, for a citizen to figure out what they were doing. When I started covering Oyster Bay, the meetings tended to last about 15 minutes. Uh, I, I do believe, uh, and I'm going to check with uh, Mr. Freeman in the New York State Department of State, uh, that uh, this town violates the open meetings law. The meetings now tend to go on for uh, you know, hours. <laughs> I'd like to address the rampant nepotism on the payroll for this town. Almost all of you have family on the payroll. When, when you, uh, I, 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 please don't interrupt me. I ask that I not be interrupted. You can comment when I'm done. Thank you for opportunity to speak. It's our turn. Okay. But you, you have a tendency to do, you come up and you start saying, every town in the world does it this way, but you do it that way. Mr. Singh has been indicted. Mr. Singh, any comment? After a long day in court, Harendra Singh didn't say a word as he finally headed home. He also has a whole slew of other problems. Massive income tax evasion. The town had hired a high-priced law, law firm, Quinn Emanuel, that was charging $985 an hour for partner work. Uh, the, their legal bills are now over $1.6 million just since the beginning of last year on this. And the taxpayers are on the hook for that? Yeah, that's, that's taxpayer money. Today we made an application to the court uh, for bail for Mr. Singh. When he was arrested, he was allowed to stay on house arrest. And the government alleges, while out on bail, he attempted to fraudulently get a $148,000 loan illegally, I mean. And he was rearrested and then was put back in jail. And I think about a few months ago, he was released from prison. He's equipped with a monitoring vice with a G GPS component to it. He's not permitted to be outside of the property limits of his residence. 
This is systemic. I mean, you look at what happened with Sheldon Silver, the Speaker of the Assembly. When you look at what happened with the Majority Leader in the Senate, Dean Skelos, you know, police official here in Suffolk County. When you look at that, all of that, and you put it all together, it's just, it's overwhelming. Uh, it, and, and to the extent that people say, well, everybody does it, that's not, that doesn't make it right, that makes it worse. You, when you are as arrogant to think you can get away with anything, you are going to get caught. You know, basically what we said we wanted to do prior to P3 is, right. you know, they want to be the model for us for the rest at a, at a week. And by the way, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, do you find that wakes or funerals, people tend to get a lot of business done? I think perhaps shocked people the most was the, was the setting of that, that these the two officials were having, you know, a, a blatant political um, conversation at a time where they were both on the way or, or on the way back from a, uh, um, you know, a funeral for a fallen, uh, you know, police officer. they're largely discussing is Mr. Scalos is upset that the county is not fulfilling enough contracts and getting his son enough money. He said, right. He goes, well, if we can come up with like five or 10 percent of the money and you can get the rest funded private. <laughs> Had it not been for Chris Briggs, bringing the stuff to us, bringing the stuff, the stuff to the feds, it's not clear that this ever would have come to light. Well, I think in, in the beginning, we had to assume that everything we had was, was fake. I mean, not that we thought it was fake, but you, when you get documents and the, they're not coming from an, an official source, you have to assume for the sake of reporting that they're not legitimate. So Chris Briggs, yeah, he had an axe to grind. He sued the town. He wanted, he wanted to see this, this administration fall. You know, I did have to lay low for a couple years because it just got too much for my family. I'm not worried about what people think about me because the people that would see me as a whistleblower in the wrong light are the people doing the wrong. The people I'm fighting for, which is the residents that are disgusted and want, had enough with what's going on, will see me in the right. The corruption on Long Island is ingrained in the system and there's a sense of entitlement that that comes in government. Taxpayers pay the cost of corruption. I mean, these people are elected to represent the people, and when they don't, they need to be held accountable.